Restaurants have been hard hit these past few months, which prompted Lauren and Tyler Dietering to take action. The couple joins me this morning with a great way you can participate too. Lauren and Tyler, so glad to have you. Why did you form City Dining Club Louisville in the first place? So we were both involved in marketing and in our professional careers. So we wanted to give restaurants an inclusive and professional outlet to really promote their brand and promote their restaurants to get people to, you know, get their takeout, get their carry out during this pandemic. For people who don't know yet, though, what your group is all about, one, it's a Facebook group. You welcome people to join. All you have to do is go to Facebook and find City Dining Club Louisville. But you are not only promoting, I mean, restaurant after restaurant and helping them thrive, but you're including your members so that members not only are able to assist the restaurants, but you guys seem to make it a mission to have a lot of fun as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we um, started the group at the end of May and you know, we didn't know what to expect. I remember when we were so excited just to get our first 1,000 members, and now we're almost at 11,000. And like you said, at first, it was just, you know, for restaurants and customers to post pictures of their food and drink, but we really wanted to engage our members and have a lot of fun with them. So we have a weekly content calendar, and we're giving away prizes at minimum three times per week. We have a show called Dinner for a Winner that we host every Monday at 7.30 from our own living room. It's Facebook Live, it's similar to Family Feud. We'll ask the question like, name a board game, and we have a determined answer on our game board. And uh, people put in their guesses for chances to win gift cards to local restaurants. I'm not gonna lie, Angie, most of the time, Dinner for a Winner is a hot mess in our home. <laughs> Uh, Tyler's screwing up the sponsors. I'm screwing up the questions. Yeah, dogs fighting. Dogs fighting. Um, but I think people just love that it's organic and it's from our home and, you know, it's fun. And, you know, when the winners win their prize, we ask them if they're willing to, when they cash in, to take a picture of that, that meal and post it on our group and promote that restaurant. I love the organic nature of that because, I mean, if there's anything that we all collectively have learned from this is, I mean, we are in it together. And, and even though everyone walks their own path, the reality of it, I mean, I was in the midst of an interview and I had two cats who were fighting and then knocked over my ring light. And that's that's just life. But you both work full-time jobs. And, and, and this is not something that you're monetizing. This is, I've checked you out. This is not something where you are doing this for the fame and the fortune, but I mean, you really genuinely as a couple decided we want to, we want to do something to help. And I, I always, I always am interested why, because it does take time as fun as it is and as rewarding as it has to be. Why would you take such time and a continued commitment to help perfect strangers? Sure. So, um, like you said, we both have full-time jobs. We're not trying to monetize this. Uh, we are a registered nonprofit, but I think that we realized because of our professional background and our expertise that we had a real platform to establish for these restaurants. And we have established, you know, personal relationships with so many restaurant owners. And every Thursday we do a hometown highlight and we interview a restaurant owner and tell their story, not just, oh, Bambi Bar, but who was the person behind Bambi Bar? And I think Tyler will tell you when we meet those people, either face-to-face, -face, socially distanced, or you know, via phone call, that's what makes it worth it every day. You know, I, I feel like we're always just trying to help the community in some way. <clears throat> we're not actually from here, so it was just us. We don't really have family. We have tons of friends just through um, volleyball and rec sports and stuff, but um, not only do we do the restaurant thing, but we also help foster animals as well through the Kentucky Humane Society. So when we see an avenue that we can capitalize on or be helpful with, um, we definitely capitalize on it and try to give it our best effort and make it a better situation. And I would, I'll just follow up with that. I think Tyler made a good point is that we're not from Louisville originally. We've been here six years, but it has truly become our home. We didn't expect to stay here as long as we have. I tell everyone we're lifers now. 
So if there's an opportunity to help make our city of Louisville a better place, even just in a tiny manner, we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to do that. Okay, Tyler and Lauren, I'm a transplant as well. I've been here since 2002, and I always tell people I came for love. I have a fantastic ex, but I fell in love with this community. So we have to ask, where are you from originally? Even though, like you said, you are Louisville lifers. <laughs> we are both from small towns in Northwest Ohio. I promise if I told you the name, you, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> I'm from Bell Center, no stoplight town. He's from Spencerville. Spencerville. We have two stoplights, one for a school and then one at an actual uh, crossroad. <laughs> I think that's part of what makes, I mean, both Louisville and Southern Indiana, I mean, so fantastic is we have, it's just a melting pot from all over the place. Now, what are you hearing? Because, I mean, of course, March, especially mid-March was, a, I mean, tremendously difficult time and things have not necessarily gotten easier for some people every day. It seems like we're seeing yet another restaurant or bar that has closed their doors or is fearing that they were going to have to close their doors. The regulations, it, things keep changing. You're, you're out there safely, as you said, Lauren, but you're out there talking to people. So what are you hearing from the restaurant owners and, I mean, the employees as well? I think it's a little bit of a mix. Um, you know, like I said, we're establishing personal relationships with these restaurant owners and the employees, and they're scared. I'm not going to lie. They are scared, but at the same time, they feel the love and support, not only from our group, but from Google as a whole. And I think that support and that compassion gives them a sense of hope um, and maybe uplifts them. Yeah, and I would say that every time that it seems like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, it's so unpredictable with everything going on that that light gets taken away. And we want that light to remain shining just a little bit if we possibly can for the restaurants. Um, you know, we don't want them to, to shut their doors in any way. We want them to survive this thing and hopefully get to 2021 with a successful business and, and a staff that's, you know, making a living off of, of what they can. Absolutely. I think one of the, the most exciting things have, have, since living here is just watching how Louisville has become, I mean, just a food epicenter. And then to see all of this happen. And who knew? I mean, we all have to eat. Who knew that you could easily help out your restaurants and your bars by just patronizing them, even if you're not comfortable going in order takeout curbside. So last words from the two of you, what would be the number one reason why you would encourage someone to join your group? I think the number one reason is obviously to support the restaurants. Like Tyler said, we want these restaurants to, you know, survive this, but not only that, I'm, we're a lot of fun. I promise that, <laughs> I promise that you're going to have fun and, uh, you You'll know, get to discover restaurants and bars that you've never even heard of. I've never heard of any bar before this group. And I've I never heard, heard, of Chubby heard of Chubby Ray's. Um, Rubby's, there's several other restaurants. Burger Eam is another one. I've never heard of the restaurant. Um, it just gives you an opportunity to uncover some more restaurants that are right up your alley in terms of cuisines that you like. Um, and it also gives you an opportunity to enjoy those restaurants at a discounted rate. Yeah, so I was doing the math this morning just because I was curious. And in the two months that we've been a group, we have given away over $3,000 in prizes. So that's another reason to join our group. You could win some gift cards to some local restaurants. So it's a win-win. It's a win-win-win all the way around. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask Lauren and Tyler, it's kind of a, a thing that we do on Great Day Live. Anytime we have a furry one who enters the picture, who is this? So this is, this is our first baby. This is Gus, this is our first baby. And then that's oh, Pig. Pig. They're brothers. So. And then Stevie and Bruiser, uh, we made sure to get them uh, out of the room so yeah. they wouldn't be interrupting. <laughs> Stevie's blind and deaf and he would knock over our stand that we have to stop <laughs> up on now. So. Oh, well, uh, Great Day Live viewers would definitely um, affirm this. We are big supporters of all things furry, feathered, you have it, but also the Kentucky Humane Society. You said that you foster for them. They're definitely a special partner of ours as well. Thank you for introducing part of your feline family to us. Of course. <laughs> Unintentionally, but. Of course, they just had to make an appearance like hey, always. Hey. 
That's probably one of the best parts about what we're doing. Thanks a lot, Tyler. To join City Dining Club Louisville, just search for the group on Facebook.